What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Lights Out Podcast. I'm your host, Josh. Today, we are doing a very different kind of episode here. This is actually the very first episode I've ever done with a guest Ooh. on Lights Out before. I'm honored. And you're Thank you. the very first guest. Wow, thanks. Today, we have Terry Huberman. And I'm very excited that you just happened to be here, actually, for another one of our shows at Malahar Media, and that was The Sesh. And it was interesting having you read my wife Kendall and her cousin and also tell us about our baby that's coming yeah that was very exciting (laughs) and and it just got me thinking that you know I'd love to sort of pick a psychic's brain Mm. for for a little while and just also I found out that you were a paranormal investigator yeah and that's kind of how you got into or really discovered this this world I guess you, you would say yeah, I had my first medium mystic experience on an investigation. <laughs> that was so scary. I, I was going to say that's that's got to be how did, how did that exactly come mm-hmm. about and how did you get into paranormal? Maybe take us back and sure. just sort of give us a quick overview yeah. of who you are and your background and sure. how you got into all this. How did this happen? How did this happen, right? <laughs> how does anything happen? What the what? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh wait, just really quick. Cussing, no cussing. Oh no, the lights out is you're Every fine. everything okay. and ev- anything yeah. and everything. Yeah, <laughs> okay. exactly. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Just check in. Um, okay, yeah. So all my life I've had psychic tendencies. My mom, both of my sisters, and my mother's mother. So it runs on my mom's side of the family. Clairvoyance, you think? Um, you know, clairvoyance is seeing. Clear so is that seeing. Physically seeing images. Or it could be in the mind's eye. Okay. Seeing things. Sure. Okay. So my primary strengths are a clear sentience, which means I feel things, um, and clear audience, which means I hear things. Now, it may not be a disembodied voice that I'm hearing, but I'll hear it in my mind's ear. So a clear, which is like the senses a psychic or medium uses, it's a French word for clear. So it's just clearer, more tuned in sensing. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So for me, I feel things. So I like, I've never physically been pregnant before, but I have felt pregnant. Okay. I've never been stabbed before, but I have felt stabbed. If okay. that makes any sure. sense. So that's yeah. the, the clear feeling. Like I could describe it for you. And you can have multiple abilities, clear. Yes. Yes, and as a matter of fact, if you are um, reading for somebody who may not speak the same language as you, they may um, come to you using not your normal, regular, or primary or secondary clair. So I'm not primarily clairvoyant, but if I might be speaking with a spirit whose original language was not English, because I'm an English speaker, They might, just to clarify what they're trying to say to me, they might put pictures into my head. Okay. So, yeah, you can have more than one way of communicating. You're just using the human physical senses to decipher the energy waves, the the data and information off of the energy waves. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. uh, Yeah, I've always wondered how, how it works. But when you lay it out like that, basically you're using your senses, but you're mind's sense like your mind so when you say mind are you talking like your consciousness your soul's yes ability versus the physical brain right now when i've been on paranormal investigations i have heard disembodied voices which means that's my human physical ear that okay. I'm hearing. You're hearing a physical right. voice manifest in this reality. Right. And and you're getting the information and data through your human ear. Okay. So for example, when I was reading for Kendall and I heard I'm healthy, I don't know if you remember that part yeah. where the baby yeah. was saying I'm I'm healthy. I didn't actually hear the baby say I'm healthy with my human ear. I heard it with my mind's ear. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So it can be both. It mm-hmm. can it can come sure. across multiple ways because yeah. spirits and those on the other side have the ability to manifest in the physical. Yes, as long as they conjure up enough energy that your physical human senses can detect and discern and get that data and information. So for me personally, <laughs> like I do not want to see things. Like if I'm here to help people, which is what I do, I don't want to see somebody take their own life. 
Like for me, it's a lot easier. To, this is going to sound weird, distorted, but it's easier for me to feel someone take their own life sure. than to see it. So when I first realized I could have more control over all of this, I created what I called contracts with God, where I said, okay, you want me to do this work? I don't want to see things. So uh, like if I went to a cemetery, if I did any investigation, I think twice I've seen apparitions and they like scare the fuck out of me. I'm like, uh-uh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm out. You want me to do this work? Then bring it to me right, in a way cause... that I'll do the work because you still you're still human you still experience fear yes and so if those if you start seeing these yes. things then that could deter you from yeah. doing this work and i'm gonna yeah. shut down right. my senses yeah. and right I'll be like, you're gonna Peace close out. off be like nope Bye bye but i'm sure there are people that oh, absolutely that do use that yes. clairvoyance and there are to... people that enjoy it yeah. yeah yeah so they would physically see if someone is standing next to you i would sense it i would feel sure. it you feel the energy of mm-hmm. that yeah, or I hear it. Spirit. I'm okay hearing it. Like, I know it's kind of gross, but like if someone were to shoot another person, I hear the sound okay. of the shooting and what it feels like to go through the flesh or the okay. bone or, or whatnot. Okay, okay. It's in my inner or my mind's ear. Okay, so you said multiple family members share these gifts then, or are they different for <laughs> other family members or maybe they didn't realize those gifts or... So it's interesting because there's a difference between a psychic and a medium. Yeah. Will, and, you, will you just kind of, because I think those terms get sort of put together. They and, do. They and do. And I even said at the beginning, a psychic medium, and I meant psychic and medium because they're both different things, right? right? Being psychic is different from being a medium, right? Is, right. Can so, I take a crack at it? I'm yes, just, please. I love that. Is a psychic like somebody who is more predicting things that happen? And a medium is a communicator, somebody who makes contact with spirits or those on the other side. Is that sort of? No. No. <laughs> but okay. I give you credit okay. and points and yay Good. for you. I'm, I'm excited to learn something <laughs> then. This is great. Okay. So when you're, when you're uh, using a psychic, psychics typically deal with people who are living. Mm. So you're dealing with the energetic system, the energy fields of okay. someone who's living. Okay. Now you can get information off of people who are no longer lit or about people who are no longer living from someone who's living, but you're, you're dealing with the energy of someone who's living. So a medium is someone who is communicating with a spirit. Okay. Not with a live person, with a spirit. Interesting. Okay. So therefore, uh, a medium gives all the information and is having that conversation with a spirit. So they're giving you their perceptions, their points of views, their memories, their opinions, whatever, which which may not be like you. If I'm reading you, for example, you may not have had those experiences, those memories or whatever with that spirit. So you may not know that information. Okay. So I'm talking directly to the spirit. Right. Okay. okay? But when I'm doing psychic work, I'm talking to you and your current energy field. And, okay. So, Got, so it's like pulling from different data pools. In yes, a way. exactly. Psychics pulling from the living data pool. Right. And what you can read off of that person versus medium is off of somebody who's deceased on the other side. A spirit, yes, who is trying, who's trying to come through to you, yes, okay, and just to confuse you a little more, because why not? Uh, why not? <laughs> every medium is a psychic, okay, but not every psychic is a medium, is a medium. right? And I knew that. I knew that okay. not every psychic is a medium. That, but um, it makes sense that yeah. a medium could do both. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So someone who's a psychic medium, is there both a psychic and a medium? But I think there's a lot of confusion. And, you know, quite quite honestly, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like if someone's going to call themselves a medium and they're going to help somebody find closure, comfort, healing, and they're getting the information off of someone living instead of directly communicating, like I don't care as long as the bottom line is met that that person walks away from that session feeling closure, comfort, feeling better about their loved one, you know, semantics and or people are probably not, I don't know, you know, if any other mediums who might be (laughs) 
listening to this going, what the hell is she saying? <laughs> like, that's stupid. Because there are people who are very egotistical about that stuff. Yeah. And like, you know, okay, when you're going to define it by definition, you know, that's the way it is. But you can still do good work, even if you're not communicating with the dead per se. Sure. So it's, you know, it, as long as somebody walks Different away feeling. Different kind of work. Yeah, you're kind yeah. of there to help just ra- raise spirits and, and you know. Give make someone them, comfort, closure, right, right. And help them Which feel better about their loved thing. one passing. Like no, a grief I mean, counselor or something exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, a mother who loses a child, that's right. like, that's rough, right. you know, especially when they're unexpected deaths. Right. You know, you never got to say goodbye. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's a lot. Or someone who was murdered. Yeah. You know, there's a lot that goes on in terms of healing and grief and, you know, the uh, the, the whole emotional process. So, mm-hmm. and there are fakes and frauds out there. Ab, so fucking lootly. Yeah. I think that's the hardest thing. And I think that's what skeptics like yeah, to go to most. Absolutely. Is, is like, well, for every one real one, there's like a hundred yeah. fake ones out there, which could or could not be true. I think it's true, unfortunately. Yeah. And and like you said, I think ego gets wrapped up into yeah. it a lot of times and people like sort of the power by saying, I'm a medium or a psychic, what that brings yeah. to them from an egotistical point of view. Yeah. And so they just kind of roll with it. Yeah. Like, and I'm interested to hear how you got into this because I think how you get into it is also huge in, in sort of explaining, you know, why you do what you do. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah. take us through like how you, how you sort of found your abilities sure. and. Yeah. So just really quick with my family, I believe they're psychics or not mediums, at least just yet. So there is a defining moment when you realize or you learn or experience that you're a medium. So and some people it's, you know, from the beginning. And then some people like me, very late in life, I was about 40. Oh, wow. Yeah. So psychic my whole life didn't know I was a medium until I was about 40. Wow. And so from my experience, when I realized it, I was a paranormal investigator. And so I I had a team. Which, how'd you get into that? What, have you always been interested in sort of ghost story? Like, how'd you get into paranormal at all? So I love vampires. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Well, these, this kind of looks like Yeah, I know. That's why I walked in. I'm like, yes, (laughs) I love the throne. Yeah. Uh, And I've loved the ghost stuff. I've always loved that stuff just because it's always, you know, I've always had that and just part of my life. Um, But there was a show called Psychic Kids. I don't remember what channel it was on, A&E or something back in the day. I was in between jobs at the time. And so I was watching that show and um, there were these kids that would go into haunted places and they would be led by um, a psychotherapist and a medium. And what happened is these kids had social anxiety. They had they were terrible in school. I mean, they had a whole, so many problems because they were so sensitive to energy. They were getting information. They thought they were, you know, schizophrenic, multiple personality, whatever. So I guess there was a premise for this show. And they would take these kids into these haunted locations. And the psychotherapist would analyze them just to make sure that they were, you know, emotionally balanced and all this stuff. And the medium would do his own investigation first, come up with information, do research, and then take the kids. And then Mm. the kids got to, you know, talk about what they sensed, what they felt, their impressions, and they got validated. Wow. And these kids, all of a sudden, their grades got better. They started making friends. So they owned themselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I said, if a kid could do this, I could do this, right? So I just started doing some research and um, I found some meetup groups that had, you know, paranormal investigations and stuff until I finally got onto a team. It's actually really hard to get onto a team. Yeah. So I got onto a team and just being, you know, so sensitive, they just said, you're the, they call them sensitives. You're the psychic of the team. You're the sensitives. It's like, okay. And on our team, there was one other uh, psychic as well. And everybody else had different jobs, EVPs, right. grids, laser grids, whatever, you know, research, whatever. So, yeah, so I would just pretty much sit and I, I had a pen that lit up. It had a light at the end and I would just write down all the impressions that I got and then someone would go and validate it afterwards. And we'd get hired per se, right. you know, into homes and stuff just to, you know, see what was going on. There were all right. these claims, all of this stuff. And then I had my first mediumistic experience. Interesting. And it scared the crap out of me. So what happened? 
It was awful. Oh, no. <laughs> it was awful. So um, it was in West Covina. I can't remember it, what the actual location was, uh, was called, but it was like a firehouse and a jail cell in on one okay. area of the property. And on the other area was like a heritage museum. Okay. So, so lots of history at this lots location. Lots of history, okay. uh, estate stuff, all that stuff. So our team was split into two. One one team was doing like uh, EVPs in in the Heritage Museum. And I was with, I don't know, two or three other teammates, maybe four teammates, um, in the jail cell and firehouse. It was one kind of like property we were, or like kind of room. And we were just, you know, doing our normal, hey, if you're here, right. say something. Which <laughs> does that, is that a good way to go about? trying to I'm not a fan of provoking. Get a response. I'm not a fan of provoking. provoking. I call that provoking, yeah. but I mean at the same time how are you supposed is to Is there a way to like if you're not a psychic, mm -hmm. is there a way to reach out without being like, "Hey, move this if you're here or you Yeah, know, there say really something. isn't. So it's like it's that catch 22. It's like, okay, you're provoke. I guess you it's I guess you can it's like how you're going to provoke, sure. you know, have some gentleness. If you're honest. provoking out of fear yeah. or provoking yeah. to, because people will be like, in a nice way. You yeah. Know, like, like I like the scientific way where you're just trying to gather data and information. Right. So to do that, you can just hang out in a room and it's not like the spirit world is only going to show up at 2 a.m. Right. You know, in an abandoned building like you can. It, it's totally, just, you know. On that note, just while you, just because you said that, it's kind of silly to just I, attempt to make contact with spirits so. in the dark in a abandoned basement of a house or something. Personal opinion, I think so. <laughs> Have I done it? Yes. Yeah. I think, and I think obviously with shows and things like that, they do it for the you know sort of the shock and awe of it, and they edit a lot of yeah. that stuff. So much of that is bullshit. Oh, I know. I I a lot of it is hard to watch nowadays because I just am like. That's so clearly, yeah. Fade. Or they're like, it's "Oh, I feel this," or "I feel like that," and I'm like, mm -mm. "I mean, I've I've been to a few haunted locations before, and just you know, tried to be open and stuff, and and just absolutely nothing. Most of the time, nothing happens. Yeah, you don't know if anything happens until afterwards, anyway. So it's not scary. It's actually really boring. Right? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, it's so boring. Ghost hunting is boring. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's, you know, the, the thrill is the potential. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, where that's what gets, you're kind of living and the camaraderie of. and then totally. going out to eat afterwards <laughs> and before like strategizing. So like teamwork, like that's yeah. the fun yeah. part or just sort of the fear and lore of the place and yeah. the stories being History. somewhere that, yeah. you know, something horrible yeah. happens. And do you think that place is like, I guess I'm getting ahead. Let me, let me, <laughs> I have so many questions, but That's I okay. want to hear yeah, yeah. Um, your, your first medium experience. Cause so you're at this mm -hmm. abandoned firehouse jail cell mm -hmm. type building. Yeah. And uh, we're just sitting there, you know, just chatting, you know, I was with, I think it was, I only think there was one guy with us and maybe like three other women and then me. So it was like five of us total, something like that. And we're just, you know, sitting talking. And then all of a sudden I just, I felt I, I can't I don't even know what I felt in that now moment, but I felt I didn't feel like myself, but I knew I was still myself. It was really bizarre. And then all of a sudden I start rocking like and I'm like, I can't control the rocking. And I'm like, what's happening? And then I had this huge rush of emotion of like regret and sorrow come over me. It was so weird. And then I felt like I was a man. Like I was inside. Like I knew I was Terry. I knew I was me, but I was a man also. And then I I started this fugue of like automatic writing. And I couldn't read the writing because automatic writing you can't really read. But I kept, I was rocking. I was, I started to hyperventilate. And all the, the, all the while I know I'm me, but I also know I can't stop my body from Sorry, like, no, I can't stop my body from what's happening. And I just kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, over and over again. I don't, it felt like a lifetime for me. Wow. I don't know. I think it was maybe about 20, 25 minutes. Cause like what happens is 
that a spirit, until you learn to control it so that you blend with it. Okay. So it doesn't overwhelm it takes you. Over you. Okay. Right. And this is my first time. So it's like I had an idea, but I was lo- it, the feeling that I got was like locked and secured. I'm not going anywhere. In a way, it was like a hostage. Yeah. But I wasn't because at the same time, I knew who I was. And I was like kind of curious <laughs> at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I bet. But I was a weirded out. There was just a lot that was going on. So I just kind of went with it. And uh, I just kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think some of the other people started asking me questions like, who was I? Yeah. You know, and, and at one point, the name Dick came up. Dick. And uh, who was I? Okay, I was Dick. What was my role? I was like the head fire chief or whatever. Why am I so sorry? Or what am I so angry about? how rude I was to the to the people. I didn't let them like go home when they were supposed to yeah, go home. Yeah. And I was horrible to them. I would keep pay away from them. Oh, wow. This whole thing until I guess Dick felt like, okay, like I said what I needed to say. And then all of a sudden I just came out of it and I was like, what just happened? Yeah. I was like, you know. Did you feel like drain? I was exhausted. Like energy drain, just like I was, something I, sort of took the life out of you in a way kind of like that yeah Yeah. and i knew that that was not going to be the last time i knew that was the beginning (laughs) wow so it's like i knew what was happening i knew what happened after like i know that that's what happened and i'm like oh shit i don't think i like this i don't you know mm." because i felt like i wasn't in control yeah but at the same time i felt like i could be in control if i knew what to do i just didn't know what to do When it comes to personal hygiene, who has time to read the long list of ingredients on the back of the bottle? Some ingredients I can't even pronounce. If you're like me and care about what goes on your body, then it's time to try native personal care products like I did. Every native product is thoughtfully formulated to keep you feeling and smelling fresh all day long. Best known for their aluminum-free deodorant, Native wants to help you practice safe sweats, which is why they keep their ingredients list bare naked. With ingredients you'll understand like coconut oil, shea butter, and baking soda. Native deodorant checks a lot of boxes, 24-hour odor protection, naturally derived ingredients, a smooth, residue-free application, and over 10 scents to choose from. Native's coconut and vanilla scented deodorant has been a fan favorite for years. My personal favorite right now is Native's Jungalo scent, which is a really nice tangerine and citrus blossom mix. And what I like about Native is the fact that the scents are unisex. Kendall and I can use the same products. Obviously, we use our own deodorants. It's kind of nasty, but... And when it comes to body wash and all the other Native products, toothpaste, we can share them. And I absolutely love that about Native. Now is the time to make the switch from an antiperspirant to Native. When you visit their site, you can discover all their fresh scents and maybe even try out one of their moisturizing body washes while you're at it. I love their body washes. Some of the best. It smells so freaking good. So smell and feel fresh all day long with Native. Get 20% off your first order by going to nativedo.com slash lights out or use promo code lights out at checkout. That's nativedeo.com slash lights out or use promo code lights out at checkout for 20% off your first order. I've noticed my morning routine can really make or break how my day is going to play out. First of all, I'm not a morning person, so I need something to get me going. Whether I'm hitting the gym or I'm hitting that snooze button, I make sure I'm going to have my best day every day by starting with Bloom. Bloom Nutrition makes it easy and delicious to give your body what it needs to fill your best inside and out. Their greens and superfood powder blend fights bloating, helps digestion, increases natural energy, and keeps your skin glowing. I love to throw the greens and superfood powder into the morning smoothie after the gym. And before I go to the gym, I also take advantage of Bloom's pre-workouts. Their high-energy pre-workouts are super, super good. They use high-quality ingredients you love with a little added boost. So there's all of that sharp focus, that muscle pump that you love, but also you don't have to worry about all the jitters and all of the the headaches that come along with some of the other pre-workouts out there. I absolutely love Bloom pre-workout. What I love about Bloom Greens is that they're packed with over 50 nutrients. You get all of it all at once, including whole fruits and veggies, fiber, probiotics, antioxidants, and more, which they combine all this in an easy-to-drink formula. And right now, Bloom Nutrition is offering our listeners 15% off your purchase of their greens and superfoods blend when you go to Bloom nu.com slash lights out that's b-l-o-o-m n-u 
dot com slash lights out for 15 percent off your purchase again go to bloom dot com slash lights out for 15 percent off so my first mediumistic experience was very dramatic and it was very exhausting and we were i don't know i think it was about 4 a.m when everything was done and both sides of the team came back because the other the other guys in the heritage museum they got an evp with with the name Richard, huh. which, Dick which is, a, is yeah, right. Wow. And so yeah. they went back and uh, the researcher went back and found some microfiche that the head guy's name was Richard. Richard probably went by Dick. It yeah. went by Dick and there was an award like somewhere underneath there was like this, it was like an ax. I don't know. Like glue, a fireman's like ax. That's like, like a fireman's ax yeah. um, on a piece of wood. Yeah. And it said the name Richard in quotes, Dick, oh, wow. something else. So like, and then they found microfiche of like wow. information. I was like, oh, that freaked me out. That freaked me out. So that's like to get that was confirmation. After, of, that was to get the confirmation and the validation of like at least who I was right. in that moment. Did you doubt your experience at all? Like, did you? I did not doubt the experience at all. I didn't. I and mean, people were witnessing what was happening and they were so scared they didn't know what to do i'm glad they didn't touch me i don't know what would have happened you know i mean it was like three four in the morning and and we were about i was about an hour drive home i still have to drive home by myself so like a few of us went to like we found like a 24-hour taco bell and i just like started drinking all this coke just to get enough you know sugar and caffeine in me so i got home the next day i slept the entire day wow like hit by a truck it was just Wow. And, and then I said, I need to learn how to do this the right way because I know that this is not. It's not sustainable to be a medium where you're being enveloped by this this energy. I didn't like it either. Yeah. I didn't like it. You know, hmm. I don't I didn't want it to control me. I wanted do you to feel learn like if to... do you feel like if you had more of those experiences that could negatively impact you like and when you're not connected with spirit? Like, you know, that's a good question. I never thought of it. And I don't know. And there's a big part of me, like I knew that that was going to happen. And I already knew that I was like, not your regular, typical psychic to begin with. I'm all about emotional health and awareness and healing. So I knew that it would happen again. And I wanted to do it for the right reasons. And I wanted to be in control of that. So like when you asked me that question, I don't really think it would, I would have been afraid or deterred from it i think i would have just eventually gotten the training anyways to help to be of service okay to bring comfort to bring closure that was always in me and do you feel like dick when he was coming through that it was from a positive place like even though he was there was definitely feelings negative feelings there was it a negative i'm just trying to figure out was it like a you channeling a negative Mm -hmm like outburst Mm -hmm. or was this somebody who on earth was this sort of negative energy, but then now has figured out evolution evolved and is like, ah, I regret how I was on earth. So I need to communicate that. It felt like remorse. Okay. But I think he was a dick. (laughs) Fitting name. (laughs) I think he was a dick because I could feel the amount of remorse he had. He couldn't have made up. Yeah. You know, so there was definitely a lot. Like he of was a shit. Yeah, he shit was not behind nice. that. He was a total asshole. Yeah, that remorse. Yeah, and I and I do feel like he had some sort of evolution or enlightenment, whatever. And a medium came in who didn't know she was a medium, but was like, "Oh, I gotta say something," and then just sort of like. Now I invite because I learned how to control. Right. I know how to blend. I invite, you know. Yeah. Um, but at the beginning, they were like, once that happened, did it just come? It was all, like a like, fl- yeah. I mean, especially in the shower for me is like I remember. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would like I I had this friend at the time who lived in South Africa. I, I said I don't know why, but did your brother pass? Because your brother came to me with a bag of apricots. This is in the shower. And he's like, oh, my God. Yes, he has passed and his favorite foods were dried apricots. And I'm like, oh, 
I didn't ask for that. I'm like, yeah. this is weird. Yeah, why I'm is like, he? Eh. Yeah, wrong, bad timing. Yeah. So when I went from our my formal training, I learned how to do all that, but mostly what I learned was how to control it because I'm human, right? And I have to do things like go on dates. Right. <laughs> That's yeah, weird. Like, yeah. hey, I'm out on a date with you and here's right. your grandmother. I'm right. like, no, no, no. You know, I got to do laundry. I got to work. I got to do all these things. Yeah. Right. So I had to, I got formal training with a British medium and I learned how to do all that. And I had what, uh, what's called a trigger, which was a physical ring that I would wear that I deemed when I wear this ring, you're not allowed to come. When I take this ring, you know, game on. Hmm. So again, that you can make a contract. The spirit world, when you make boundaries, the spirit world is actually very respectful if you keep to the boundary and you're emotionally balanced. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, right. so twice I had, I can't remember their incubus or succubus, like for the woman. I yeah. um, there, those were two interesting experiences that I had. One felt really good. <laughs> oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> One, not yeah. so much. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so the the spirit world pretty much, if you set a boundary, they will respect it. You just have to own that boundary. That makes sense. Yeah. So it works a lot like it works with here, humans. Yeah, yeah. Here in the living world. Yeah. So that translates to mm -hmm. the other side. A lot it seems like a lot of things translate from Earth it, side to yeah. the other the only, side. The only difference is an earth suit. This like physical yeah. body yeah. we mm -hmm flesh vehicle so mm -hmm. to speak that we yeah. pilot around while we're here and then the essence of the body yeah. leaves it and the power source so there's no physical they don't like once you cross there's no awareness around what you look like no the soul and the consciousness and the spirit the spirit is like part of the soul um the spirit has like a memory and a database and a bank, but it's just energy. There's okay. no physicality or materialism to it. Okay. So it there's no gender. Okay. There's like no religiosity or religiousness sure. to it. There's no, there's nothing that would be in the material world. Okay. It's just consciousness. Basically. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how, how I've always thought of it. It's interesting because so my story and my upbringing is, from a very religious mm. background. So I grew up in a very traditional Presbyterian Baptist sort of uh, upbringing from a you know, since I was born, my mm -hmm. parents instilled the Bible and all of the traditional Christian uh, beliefs. And so I knew nothing of any of this until <laughs> fairly recently. I mean, the last 10 wow. years for sure, okay. because I grew up in a world where it was very clear cut, you know, mm -hmm. You believe in Jesus, you believe in God, and you do God's work, follow the Bible, you go to heaven. And it's mm. just very like... The heaven hell thing. Yeah, the heaven hell thing. And having, you know, I was told about hell when I was like five years old. And, and wow. you know, your soul will be tortured there forever. That's and, a lot for a five-year-old. Yeah, it is a lot. It, it's, it's definitely a lot. And if there's any trauma that I've experienced in my life, I, I call it spiritual trauma religious trauma. religious trauma yeah yeah, yeah not even spiritual. it's a thing no it's a, it's a legit thing yeah yeah and i definitely have that because i felt sort of robbed uh, of the ability to explore and to really expand my consciousness and yeah. open myself up to what else is out there other than just a small circle yeah. and and my parents are still very religious mm -hmm. um and we went through a period of time where we didn't talk at all like mm -hmm. I, I basically left home when i was turned 18 years old and that's actually when i met kendall oh. um kind of going through this this whole sort of traumatic scenario where they were sort of forced me down one road which is sort of the religious road and they wanted me to marry a religious girl and you know that was the life that i was going to live and i said no not interested in that so once i turned 18 i just left home and uh, lived with my grandparents and my grandparents they were actually the ones that sort of opened me up to the greater spiritual world. Um, they've dabbled in a lot of different things, Buddhism, a lot of new age sort of mm -hmm. spiritual ideas. And I really gravitated towards them. And I felt very just connected with them mm -hmm. my entire life. And I thank them a lot before sort of giving me, you know, some direction there and just sort of exposing me to these things astrology and all these other sure. sort of alternative alternative ideas that you know if my parents are here they would be 
very concerned and they would be like, you know, your <laughs> channel, what you're channeling oh, yeah. is the devil. Yeah. I'm sure you've had people oh, yeah. that tell you that or, you know, you're not doing oh, anything yeah. positive here. You're For just sure. misleading and misguiding people. Yeah. And how do, how do you, what's your response to people like that? Like, how do you win somebody over who has that sort of perspective? I don't try to win them over. <laughs> I mean, you smart. have skeptics and then you have cynics and skeptics are at least open-minded to experiment and try. A skeptic, no matter what you do, forget it. I'm not here to make somebody listen to what I say or have them say, oh, you know, they have to believe what I say. And it's a waste of my time. Yeah. It's a waste of my energy. But I always empower people. Like, if I say something to you and it doesn't feel right, you'll feel it in your body. Like, you'll just tighten up or a part of your body will, you know, then you can say I'm bullshitting you. Like right. it doesn't resonate. It doesn't connect with you. So do not take that advice. Do not, you know, just toss it aside. Take what feels right to you. Cause if something feels right to you energetically, it means you're in alignment with it. It's that wavelength. So that's all that's happening. And most people, if they can't see, touch, smell, hear it, right, with their human physical senses, they believe it doesn't exist. Right. But what about Wi-Fi signal? Do you see the Wi-Fi signals around? Right, right. No, but it exists, right? So it's just that there is energy. There are light waves that human senses just don't interpret. You don't see them, but yeah. it doesn't mean that they don't exist. You don't hear them. doesn't mean they exist. Right. Sm smell, touch, taste, you know, all those. So, and, and they don't want to. That's fine. I don't care. My life has not changed at all. Right. So whatever. Right. You take do it, you. But, take, you yeah. know, take what you want and leave yeah. the rest. It's interesting, though, because <laughs> religious people are really coming from the same perspective, though, in a way, yeah. you know, like they have their physical book that mm -hmm. they're pulling information from but ultimately the it's book of faith. shadows yeah <laughs> ultimately <laughs> it's yeah exactly <laughs> ultimately it's faith though ultimately yeah. it's trusting in something you cannot see exactly you know you've never seen god you've never seen right these people that you worship or praying for matter you know like these things you can't see them so it's really no really no different it's just explaining it in a different way well what it does is Religion gives structure. Right. And structure is something that humans feel comfortable with because the unknown is scary. That's why we're always yeah, looking yeah, for results yeah. and outcomes. Yep. That's what anxiety is. Yeah. Right. We want that outcome and that result right now. We want to know. So it's the knowledge. And that's what religion does is it just gives you structure, which provides safety. Yes. hundred percent. So if you can have faith, faith and go beyond what you can see you can still feel safe but it you have to learn it's a learning process it it's it not is. something humans are just not designed and built that way because we have these physical senses because the brain interprets the data and information off of these light waves right right so a lot of people are like if i don't see it i don't believe it and that's fine yeah yeah no, and I think for me personally, that was like something that I, it took a while. I mean, to be in religion for 18 years of my life and then to go completely away. And I but met, that's what you learned, right. 18 years yeah. worth of it that right. you now had to unlearn because you were exposed to something that now you can possibly think about on your own or just the opportunity to, that's all. It was just an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, and I don't, you know, looking back at, for a long time, I was very negative about it, very angry. Yeah. And I think so. it was just from some of the experiences that I had and obviously the fear based uh, religion, you know, where it's scary. They try yeah. to make it scary if you don't believe. Right. Yeah. And that you're going to end up somewhere you don't want to be. Because it gives you more control. Yeah. Right. And, it's control. Know, it's 100% control. Religion likes to control. They do. Sorry. They do. No, it's, I mean, it's the truth. You really can't deny that. I mean, being in it, that's exactly what it was. And my parents used it to control my brother and I and and try to steer us one direction or the other. But once I got over that sort of traumatic parts and sort of just accepted what I had been through, it gave me such a like jump into, you know, the unknown. Yeah. And, and now I feel like I've been on this mission of like discovering the truth of what it is. Truth seeker. Tru yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Love it. And, and just exploring all different ideas. Yeah. And that's what got me 
sucked into the paranormal is it's like I am a believer in the paranormal because I'm I'm with you. I think that, you know, we don't have to sense everything with our five senses for it to be real. There are things that are beyond that we can also measure. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we know that they exist in other ways through science and, and, and everything that it's just our senses that we can't see it just because personally through my physical body, I can't see spirits or I can't talk to them or receive messages from yet. them. that doesn't mean yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you can train yourself yeah. to do it really yeah in in that case what's the number one thing you need as to start down that path it's probably to understand when you're operating from ego and ego is not a bad thing ego is right. there to save your life right. so you do need ego right but it's just understanding uh when ego is kind of blocking and it's a practice thing because the the problem, <laughs> there's so many problems with being human. <laughs> yeah. But the challenge with being human is the entanglement, mm-hmm. the entanglement between the physical world and the non-physical world. Because we have like a higher soul and then we also have an incarnate soul. Okay. And the incarnate soul is the one that's in our body per se, right? And that is the part of the soul that sees things as reality. So this is where it gets kind of multidimensional yeah, in a way. Yeah. You know, so like my hand is like the energetic frequency, the subatomic particles are vibrating in a certain pattern at a certain pace that's showing up in order as my to hand. Manifest itself. To yeah. manifest, right. to conjure up. Yes, right. Yeah. So I'm not even close to stepping so aside from my ego to know or trust that if I just understood that I could change those frequencies, the pacing and and all of that, um, that my hand could disappear and make it a higher vibrational frequency. Lower frequency is more physical, tangible. Higher, you can't see. My ego is just not, it's like I'm too entangled in the physical reality to do that. So, but in other areas, I mean, I can talk to dead people for crying out loud. Like they're not physically here. So it's like in some areas I can let go, some areas I can't, you know, it's, it's all part of the journey. But the more I at least implement and practice, I can get closer and closer because there are many things that I've manifested that I've literally poof created from nothing. If you can create something from nothing, you can change that too. Right, right. But it's like... So that's real then. It is real. It's magic. I mean, like it's real. That's that's so interesting. It's just energy. It's real. It's trusting, you know, all of that. So, so like, would you agree with a statement in, in essence that we are God in a way, like we are in God in the sense of in the biblical version, God is the creator of the universe, creator of all worlds. And, and when you, explain it like that if we are able to create something from nothing we are god Mm -hmm. i well yeah i mean they they call it the god particle right right exactly i mean yeah yeah. because it's creator right that's what god is is creator so we are we are creators Yeah. yeah yeah we are so we create everything that is here and it makes sense personally and kendall would attest to this too that I say this to her all the time. I feel like we are very good at manifesting just in general because of the, you know, we, we constantly sit around and like, can't believe how great everything has worked out for us. Everything's just kind of fallen. But then when I think back on all of our decisions and everything that's happened to us, it's all was manifested at some point. And sometimes I wonder if the two of us together Oh, yeah. Manifesting well, energy together influences accelerates. energy. It's called amplification, like okay. without a doubt. The thing is, is that like there are belief systems and thoughts like thought forms that have lower vibrational frequencies. So those will block and stand in the way of your manifestation. Mm. It's like if you've had trauma and from that trauma, like you created a story about yourself, which is your truth, your absolute truth based on an experience that happened. And you believe that more than you believe an outcome could possibly happen, you can't manifest. Does that make sense? So the reason why you can be God is if you can get past that. Right, right. So you become bigger than your 
yourself. Right. Bigger than your thoughts, bigger than your body, bigger than your emotions. That's when you become godlike. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think I think a lot of people be very confused by that. Without a doubt. Because uh, <laughs> we're not trained right, to right, do that. Right. We learn from the time we're like zero to two years old, our worthiness based on our caregivers. So if we had a parent who, you know, let's just say a mom had depression, postpartum depression, and just left the child to screen, like, I don't know how old you are, but but in my day, there was this Dr. Spock dude who said, let the kid soothe itself by screaming. right, Right. So what did a screaming child, for example, me learn? You know, that I'm not worthy enough to be taken care of because I have a need that is not being met. Maybe I'm hungry. Maybe I need a diaper change, whatever. So the only way I can express myself is through crying. Mm -hmm. Right. But if I'm neglected or if I'm too much, whoops, (laughs) I'm having a violent relationship (laughs) with your mic, um, you know, then it can go the other way, too. But you learn your you learn that when you cannot verbally ask for what you need and your needs are not met. So then if you develop the story of like, I'm not worthy enough, well, guess what? I'm not worthy enough to create that $10,000 that I want to invest in a right, business. Right. So it's like your, tr- it's developmental trauma. It's yeah. like all of this other, it goes deep. It does go deep. And people think manifestation is just this light and fluffy. And no, like, eh. no, it's no, not. it's not. It's, it goes deep. You have to work on this stuff in a reflection, Absolutely. mind state, consciousness, awareness, then you can manipulate energy. Right, right. God, there's a, a lot. I know. That's a hundred percent spot on though. Like just from my personal perspective and in my life and my wife's life. And then seeing other people around us that are close to us and yeah. seeing, you know, sort of how things work out for them. And I mean, we were we were lucky we kind of caught on to this this idea or, you know, way of thinking a while ago and we just lashed on to it and just really went full in on it. And I mean, I, I a hundred percent believe it because I've seen it work in my life and just, it continues to work in my life and I trust it and I trust my intuition. I trust my gut. I trust whatever you want to call it. Don't you think that's a big problem for most people? They don't trust their intuition. Well, there's two things. Okay. They don't trust themselves and then they don't do the follow through work. They say they're going to do. Cause I'm hearing you say, Oh, we had all of this, you know, these dreams, yeah. these ideas, but you actually did something right. about Execute, it. Like Execute, like follow the plan. Follow and... Action. You can't, you can't accomplish anything no. by just talking. Right. About and it. I think people are confused that all you have to do is speak it. Yeah. And it just, just because you want something. Right. Doesn't mean shit. Right. Right. You got to actually take, you have to be in the energy of what you want. Otherwise, you can't match to those frequencies. Right. It can't uh, materialize for, you know, if you want to, if you want to lose weight, right, you, that means you have to do the things that will cause weight loss, but just talking about it's not going to do it. Right. And that's where people get tripped up because one, they could be lazy or two, they have so much trauma. They've developed a story that they live out that story or that lens or perception of their life that they won't do the action and the follow through. Mm. But you have to do that. You have to be consistent Yeah, and you have to do the work. So, it, I mean, it's, there's a lot that goes into this. Yeah. yeah. People don't understand it. And you know, this, I have like with this, with the new wave or new age, you know, this whole love and light thing. Like yeah. I call bullshit on it. Yeah. We're still humans. Like not everything is just going to be like, I'm going to sit here and meditate and, you know, drink green juice and do yoga and, and all my dreams are going to come true. No, you got to like do all of that and do the follow. Right. Right. It doesn't, you know, so all these people who create their dreams and, and all this stuff, they've worked hard. They've done the follow through. Right. Now, there are ways to manipulate energy so you don't have to work as hard, but you still got to work. Mm. And again, it's like a learning thing. We're not taught any of that stuff. We're yeah. conditioned. Yeah. Work hard, play hard. Yeah. Although, yeah. just that in itself is not conducive to expansiveness. It's like, this is what you got to do. Right, right. Or just putting your energy into the wrong things and the wrong, yes. you know, sort of these man-made ideas sure and rather than putting that energy inward yeah 
so that you yeah. get more. I call that leaking energy mm, because wherever you place your attention, awareness, and focus, that's where your energy is going. So if you're thinking about that Facebook post, well, guess what? Your energy is going outside of you. Right. But if you're connecting to yourself, then guess what? You're either calling back your energy or you're reserving and preserving the energy you already have. So that's why I always tell people, stay in your own lane. The world's a hot mess right now, but stay in your own lane because otherwise you're leaking your energy and you can't help anybody. You cannot be, you know, like when you fly in an airplane, they tell you to put that mask on yourself before your infant child. Yeah. Because you can't save your infant child if you're dead. Right. It's true. So, you know, you got to take care of yourself first. It's not selfish. It's self-care. Most people want to help other people but they can't fully be there for somebody else because they haven't taken care of themselves first. Yeah, yeah. I have a tendency to draw in people who are sensitive. You're sensitive. You're aware. You have a consciousness. Yeah. Who are ambitious and who have anxiety. I don't think you're in that. No, no you're, yeah. you're, you're fine. You're secure. <laughs> you're fine. But when you have that anxiety, you are constantly leaking your energy. Yeah, yeah. Because it's always going it's to always the things out. that are and you're emotionally traveling to the future. Yeah, you can't even yeah, deal with the it. present. Right. I think letting go of that anxiety allow it, it's such a freeing thing because it allows you to put that energy yeah into what counts. And, yeah. And but I was never taught. I had to learn, and I still continuously learn, and that's what I do. I teach people how to do that with a spiritual flair, using yeah. energy and all that, but. If you can't get a hold of your anxiety, which a lot of it is ego based, no shame in the game. We're human. That's the way it is. Then it's difficult for you to use your instinct or your intuition to make decisions, right? you know, or choices to get unstuck or to get that money or to get that relationship Mm. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, this is something I I always think about and I never fully understood or gotten answers to let's let's talk about the flip side so with energy there's positive and negative energy Mm -hmm. so individuals that go down a dark path commit you know serial killers that just kill cause pain suffering their entire life did they essentially choose to feed and conjure that dark energy Mm -hmm. and that's what fuels them and that's what can sort of poisons them in a way poisons their spirit or their soul and propels them down that dark path is that how does what's your take on that yeah Yeah. so my take is there could be some karmic Mm. um past life lessons that need to be worked so you believe in is it reincarnation or is that the buddhist sort of the buddhist yeah i mean reincarnation it. yeah it's like the soul has rebirth yeah soul I do cycles believe, sort i do of. i okay. do believe and that's my personal take i do okay. believe in that so i do a lot of people don't and that's fine so i do believe there are seeds planted in the soul and oftentimes you know we're making contracts before we take on an earth suit so we have contract to do certain things to live out play out lessons that we haven't learned in the past that we need to currently learn I also think that a lot of it is a response from trauma mm, it, it, in their yeah. human current life. Right, totally. But you think there is karmic predisposition that I don't know. I mean, you when know, you like, say predisposition, I don't know about that. I mean... Ugh. Well, people say... So, like, for example, when whenever we talk about serial killers, there's always a term thrown around, born evil. Mm. Was this person just straight out of the womb born evil, born to kill. They have this bloodthirst in their DNA that they have to have in order to Uh, survive here. And it's like, I don't have an actual answer for you. Like there's no actual (laughs) scientific thing, but I do believe that there is an emotional imbalance. So there could be that negative energy brought in from a past life or something. Um, It could be, it could be soul's contract. It could be, I would say it's a current life thing more than a past life thing. Yeah. That's my take. I don't know if I'm right. I don't know if I'm wrong. I mean, if you think, I think if you're coming from a scientific perspective, I think the data would suggest that the number of serial killers or just people that commit evil acts have some sort of traumatic yeah. event that happens right. or something or you know, they 
saw some a young age saw somebody else be right. murdered. I mean, if you think, I mean, I don't, I don't, I haven't done enough research. I don't know enough about this, but I'm sure there are certain themes that you know serial killers have that just make them completely and totally disconnect from any kind of reality. Yeah. You know, and to me, that's a current life okay. thing. And again, it's a response to how they were raised or brought up or what they experienced. Yeah. But real trauma really isn't the event itself. It's how was someone supported after the event? That's where the damage actually comes in. So if a kid, you know, saw another kid kill a dog or something, like that kid who killed the dog obviously has tendencies completely disconnect from right. themselves. But let's say that kid who witnessed it, if they weren't getting the proper support, they might go, oh, and then start doing it yeah, too or something yeah. like that. Well, that's what you see. I mean, I've, I've covered a number of serial killers and looking at their childhood mm -hmm. is so interesting to me because there's always there's usually always something there mm -hmm. that you can point to and be like, that must have been the turning point for them. Yeah. Every, you know, prior to that, there's no signs. But then every once in a while, there's just like that one person that there's n their child is completely normal, happy, yeah. religious even. And then all yeah. of a sudden it comes out of nowhere. And I mean, I've seen that those tend to be sexual uh, predators mm. um, where it ends up being a sexual trigger yeah. that then leads to murder and all these and, other and, things. But, and it could be past life stuff yeah. too. I mean, I do believe that that, it, that does play a role. Okay. But for some reason, and I don't know if this is just the practical, pragmatic side of myself, you know, that's just like, well, a lot of it has to do with what's happening in their current lifetime. What did they learn? How were they supported? Because the whole thing about past life stuff and karma and law of attraction and all of that is there's evolution that happens. So when someone's like a serial killer or something like that, there's no evolution in that contract or karma or whatever. So I, I really, I don't know. So it's like almost a waste of just that soul's time here? Or is uh, there something I, I wouldn't to... say that because in just in a different area, they yeah. probably evolved or sure, whatever, sure. you know, or once they were caught and then now they're in jail yeah, and of course you or get, prison, yeah. like maybe. I mean, I... Mm, Yes, such a great question. I just I wish I had an answer. Like, hey, this okay. is the way it is. Yeah, but no, it's. I just, I don't, I don't know. But it is so interesting. It is, and I think that's, you know, you and I were talking about like people's intrigue and sort of the, uh, the darker sides of crime and you know just things that are morbid. I think it's that curiosity behind. It's not mm -hmm. you know that we're obsessed with killing or obsessed with the crimes that are committed. Right. I think we're just like trying to wrap her heads around how? how does this person yeah do this to another yeah living soul but like see how? there's a connection that you have to not only yourself but to like outside of yourself that you're like how could that even happen right so no matter what religious trauma you went through or whatever there's still a connection yeah, yeah. within yourself now there's not to say it's not to say that there aren't possessions and evil entities and all that stuff but which it, i was gonna ask you like we'll so, get into that in a sec yeah, but yeah so but a lot of that yes there's negative energy absolutely and it, energy influences energy we were talking about that amplification yeah. so if someone's out of alignment energetically they're going to be more susceptible to negative energy Right. So when you're having a bad day that turns into a bad week, that turns yeah. into a bad month, that turns into a bad year, you know, it that builds. is an, it's it like builds. snowballing. It snowballs. Yeah. Your mental state starts to like, you know, when you're at a lower negative frequency and here comes another lower negative frequency. Guess what it does? Piggyback. Amplifies it. Yeah. Amplifies. Makes hangs sense. out. You know draws in. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it works both ways. Uh, Negatively, yeah. positively, yeah. you can amplify both. Absolutely. Wherever you're placing your attention, that's right. you know, that's what's gonna happen. We live in the third dimension of reality, which is all about polarity, which means right. there's two ends to the stick. 
positive and negative. Yeah. Where are you going to place your focus? Because whatever you're going to focus on, you're going to get more of. Right. So that's why I was saying bad day, bad week, da da da. That's where your mindset is. Life sucks. This is shitty. Nobody cares about me. Fuck this shit. Right. You're probably going to be more likely to kill someone. <laughs> right. Let's right. be dramatic. Yeah. You know, then someone who's like, hey, I had a great day. Oh my God, this is a great week. Wow, this is a great month. Oh my God, this year I made so much more money than I did last year. They're probably not going to kill someone. Right. right. I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> Look, There's... I could be wrong. But it's it's a mental right and emo- mental causes emotional right and okay. that's why it's in your opinion it's not as simple as just no love and light no and we just no because just we have to, to deal that. with right. our physicality right. our humanity uh, that's what I feel like too I feel like you have to deal with the negative in order to turn it into a positive you have to deal with that negative energy to well that's how your mo- soul evolves right and the right. number one way you evolve as a soul, you have to take on a physical container, which is the body. Right. And you have relationships to people, places, things, and circumstances. It's the only way to evolve. Everything is relationship. Your relationship to your mic, your relationship to your wife, your relationship to your car, all of those things. Mm, yeah. I mean, then we go into attachment and attachment theory. Yeah. I mean, they're good. <laughs> like, yeah. You're asking great questions. No, here. yeah. That's it, gonna- we're going to be here for it hours. All, it, it <laughs> I all might miss my flight. <laughs> <laughs> I know, seriously. <laughs> well, I wanted to touch on, because this is this is something that comes up a lot in my understanding is is very minimal with it, with the lower density um, entities and, and just like, what's your take on demons? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, we could talk about it in sort of the biblical sense. Uh, or is there such a thing as a lower dimensional being that is inhuman that isn't human mm-hmm. that you can conjure make sure. contact with and use sort of will yeah yes i believe in all of okay. those things so do you think there's human beings that have walked this planet that have conjured lower density beings without a doubt i do believe so um, I think the common, I don't know if the word is commonality of it or the commonness of it is not because let, let's, let's be practical and pragmatic for a second. Okay. Ghostbusters, right? Yeah. They have their proton packs and they shoot yeah. the shit and everything's <laughs> fine. The demons, the ghosts and all that stuff. Don't you think if it was a lot more prevalent and it was much more in our reality, we would be having our own personal proton yeah. packs. And hello, cell phones would have a right, personal proton. Totally. So like if it was that common for demons and all that other stuff, part of our everyday learning would be, you know, the whatever the priests use for exorcism, right? Yeah, so yeah. if it was that more obvious, that more common, that more, it would be more prevalent in sure, society. Sure. So do I believe in this stuff? Yes. Do I believe it's really common? No. I do believe um, in personal experiences. So, you know, people who, you know, live in a haunted place or something like that may have had, you know, a paranormal experience and it could be very, very real. We just can't prove it. Right. But it's not that common. Can a spirit or, you know, for lack of a better term, demon or poltergeist can they become more powerful than us do they have the ability to gain enough energy to where they could willfully possess you like what's like possess you to the point where you are you know a completely different person than you were yeah i believe that can happen but i believe that First of all, not that common. It's rare, right? It's rare. Second of all, you have to be in such a shitty, awful place to not only attract it, but to have it come into you or mm. to have it, you know, take over you. And then you allow it to continually take over you. Right. Remember, I was saying when I had my experience, I knew I was me, but I knew there was someone else. But I I was curious. So like I was allowing it to still happen. So there was just like a lot, there's a lot that kind of goes into it. But most of the time, like when you hear about these like possessions and stuff, like really evil shit that they write movies about, like these people are so emotionally unstable and so horribly like 
they barely exist as a yeah, person. Right. They're just a shell. Well, then, yeah. Remember, energy needs to take on some sort of container in order to have experience or to evolve or, or whatever. So, yeah, polarity, it goes both ways. It's not everything's love and light, but not everything's evil and all that, too. Right. So, you know. Which would make sense as to why it's such a rare occurrence that yeah. most of us have enough positive mm -hmm. energy to keep that away or at least or, people around us or sure something something else something else that can sort of protecting just even ignite that little spark sure you know that could grow into a flame but if you wanted to and you know there's some people throughout history who made it their mission yeah in life so to speak to become completely enveloped by yeah i think dark, they could I think they Spiritual. could. It, it all comes down to energy. If you know your energy and you know how to manipulate it and you understand that if you can take yourself to such a low ener energy place yeah. and it's going to draw in energy, then yeah, you can do that. Mm. And it's all about control and power and all of that. Yeah, yeah. You know. But then how much of it is like the ego that's like... Like most of it <laughs> most is Most of ego? it, yeah, yeah. Rather than... In their mind, something deeper, darker, yeah. spiritual within that you're, you know, so people that go around and say, I'm doing the devil's work yeah. or I'm, you know, I'm Satan's yeah. right hand man and this is what he commanded me to do. And so therefore I'm going to do these heinous things and or self mutilate myself and put myself through all these horrific things in order yeah. to become closer to to that. That's the beauty of having free will. Right. Is that you can choose to do that and live out that way if, if you like. Right. You know, I mean, that's one of the gifts we do have is right. choice and free will. And it'll take you on a certain direction, certain path, certain timeline. And that's yeah. your Prog sort of, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what yeah. you call it. You're right, I guess, as, yeah. a, as a human to, to do that. If that yeah. is what that's you, your choice, you can do that. Right, right. Personally. Yeah, mm. that sounds horrible. Yeah, um, no. But on the flip side, so demons, lower density beings, angels, mm -hmm. spirit guides, I hear you say sp mm -hmm. spirit guides, right? Is what kind of you refer. Yeah, I even go so far as cosmic family. Okay. Like, you know, like aliens and all that. Fun oh, stuff. really? So like, <laughs> I do. okay. Like other, like yeah, they're other worldly. Beings. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you, so you believe there, obviously there's m many dimensions mm -hmm. to, I do. to the universe. Mm -hmm. Um, we think we know everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree with you. I think, I don't think we know shit really at the end of the day. Well, I think we are <laughs> arrogant little fucks, yeah. aren't we? <laughs> well, and, and that's like my biggest beef with science is that there's so many scientists that their egos are so big yeah. that they just can't accept anything beyond their knowledge, right? They're just but like... I have to say, I mean, I'm going to defend... I can't believe I'm defending the scientific <laughs> community, I'm, but I'm going to. It's like they are starting to prove... Yes, 100%. More, you know, esoteric, you know, ESP, all... You know, they are starting to do that. And I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza, but he yes, has this... Yeah. So he says science is the contemporary... Uh, language of mysticism. Mm, yeah. That's so a good science way to put is it. starting to prove some sort of mysticism. And the only thing about mysticism is it's just unknown. Yeah. Once it becomes known, then it's no longer mystical. Right. It just becomes a part of it's just a what we know as way fact. of life. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like the whole thing with quantum entanglement and all of that stuff. Like, yeah. you know, they're now science is proving, oh my goodness, there can be more than one possibility in one given moment. Holy shit, skis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and just <laughs> like science. the the concept of consciousness, you know, we've always thought consciousness resides in the brain. Yeah. But there's new research mm -hmm. and studies. I forget where it came out from, but they're saying it's the heart, in fact. Yes. Where consciousness. I was telling resides. I was telling Kendall and, and that's yeah, when you and started Janelle having about her the brain heart I was coherence. Like, yes, yes. Yes. And that's why I was telling her to to do that. Yeah. I do a lot of that. You think work. it's up here in here, but it's not. It's in here. I yeah. I do a lot of that. When I'm working one on one of my clients, I am teaching them how to access their heart, which is where truth lives. Mm. And since it's the largest This is the messy part up here, I feel yeah. like. <laughs> This is where things go wrong this is, is when you they, start yeah. thinking too hard yeah. and stuff. Yeah. That's why I always tell people, feel your way to your answer. Mm. 
don't think your way to your answer. Yeah, yeah. We're not trained to do that. No. So it's a whole thing to learn. And I'm not, trust me, I'm not perfect at it. I am still like, I keep doing my best, you know, but um, that that is key, getting the brain and the heart, the electricity, because we're basically, yeah. I mean, between the water and then the power system, the batteries, that's how we operate. You know, when we get the brain and the heart, working together that's when we create worlds that's when we're god yeah 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 that's that's so crazy that's exactly what i think too i think just I, there's just a lack of awareness and understanding and not and just shared knowledge of these things yeah and it's not mainstream yet not yet not yet it's going that and way it's slowly. hard mm-hmm. it is hard because so many people are still Whatever I see is real. Mm. If I don't see it, it's not real. And we're dealing with energy, which is not real until the the waves slow down enough to form a mug. Right. Then we know it's real. You know, so a lot of the work that I do is still so intangible and people are like, meh, whatever. And, you know, I do, uh, like I was saying earlier, I'm not your typical regular psychic medium where I'm just going to sit here and tell you your future. I want to empower you through using your own energy because you are a God, Mm. you know? Mm. So, um, can you use, so are we capable of communicating with otherworldly beings? And do you believe we can communicate with extraterrestrials and things like that? I've had a a few multidimensional experiences. I don't talk about it a lot. Because it's not very well received. Yeah, well, it probably sounds crazy to most people. Totally, yeah. totally. But I have. But when I've had those experiences, I have been so detached from my physical body. Almost like remote viewing in a way. Like kind of, kind of sort of. I mean, it's been such astral deep. Projection it's like, it's like astral projection, okay. but it's not. Because I, I'm not witnessing my body and I'm not... You're not like... like Flying Outside, away from yeah. it, seeing it no, behind it's, you. I am of. literally no one. Okay. Nobody. There's no space. There's no time. There's no thing. There's nothing. Just this blackness. And I just know I'm there, but I don't have a body. But you're, you might call it the void. You call it the quantum. It's not. It's it's a practice thing. I still can't just get there, you know, going, think I'm there. But yes, I have. And that's when I've had my multidimensional experiences. Mm-hmm. Like, and yeah, you can get there. So the, because there, there's quite a few people out there that claim through meditation, through, you know, certain readings and things like that, you can sort of reach out yeah. to these. You can do it right now, whether you'd whether you're in the state of consciousness to re, to receive back from them might be debatable. I don't know. But yeah, you can you can reach out to them right now and just say, hey, just, I don't know, what do you want to make a request? Hey, Mr. Alien. <laughs> could they come and manifest here? They could, but they have to lower their frequency right, so much. Right. The question is, or do they, they want to? Or they come up in some I, sort of... I think they, they're laughing at us personally because humanity is such a shit show right now. I right. think they're laughing at us. They're like, look at those really <laughs> low vibrational yeah. frequencies. Yeah. And technically we are because we're physicality. They're not really physicality or they're sure. physicality in a different dimension. So we can't even fathom what that looks like. Living without ego, you feel like? Oh, yeah. There's... Yeah. Versus like us silly humans here on earth where our lives practically revolve around our ego. And, and that's because of polarity. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do yeah. you think as a human race, we have the ability to evolve and expand our consciousness and reach those higher levels of, of I do believe dimensions that. or I do believe that. spiritual levels? Yeah, I do believe that. We have to um, get away from What's third and fourth uh, dimension. Ascension. People yeah. call it different well, things. Well, we're yeah. in that process now. Right. By... You know, everything having to be destroyed, like no longer what we used to live our lives, right? So now we have to think differently, act differently, be different. That's already a consciousness shift. So just by doing that, humanity is evolving and changing. Yeah. You know, but there's there's so much more room (laughs) for that to happen. It's going to take time. Right. I mean, we're still here on this planet blowing each other up, going to war. I mean, we live in a space-time reality yeah right so it takes time to go from point a to point b yeah as soon as time is gone or, or it's not so much time is gone because time doesn't exist we're the one who makes time exist 
through length, height, and width, and then like physicality, right? So like it takes, if I want to move this cup to your hand, it's going to take some sort of time. Right. I can't just, the cup is there. Right. It doesn't just pop up yeah. over here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's got to travel this distance. It's called the space time continuum. Right. Right. That's why it takes time for us to get our emotions under check so that we can manifest. So it does take time to manifest what you want. Yeah. You know, the, and it I, would take time for the paranormal, the ghosts and stuff. Yeah, exactly. To come into you the third just, dimension of reality right. because that's where time exists. You can't just go in and say, make yourself known. Yeah. And just expect things to happen. Yeah. Like you can't, it doesn't work that way. No, unfortunately. They work on their own sort of. Yeah. And that's what I kind of learned. That's why I kind of was like, yeah, yeah, ghost hunting. As fun as it sounds, it's like it is very boring. Like you're just Mo be... when you're actually doing it, yeah. it's boring. Yeah. But again, the fun stuff is the people around you. And yes, the, the after experience, stuff. the environment, the experience. Yeah. The getting sort of that sense, yeah. but to expect you're going to make contact with somebody or something is is the hope that you, you I, bring into it. I but. heard my voice being called from a little girl. I was in a location, and I even. They caught it on tape, and I, I even said, what's that? Who's that? And that was like a Class A EVP. It's somewhere in my files. I have to find it. But it's a little girl who was murdered. Oh, wow. And she goes, Terry, I heard it with my human ear, not oh, my, wow. my mind's ear. That takes a lot of energy to conjure up in this third dimension of reality for me to, for my brain to perceive that yeah. data and information. So spirits that are able to audibly... Or even Say show up or, as an apparition. Or an apparition. That's yeah. massive amounts of massive energy to amounts do. Massive amounts of energy. Which is also why it's so quick and so it's here yeah, and gone. It, be, it doesn't just, they can't yeah. keep it turned no, on. No, it is, it is <laughs> so much energy to physicalize. Mm. So much energy. And and to slow it down. Yeah. That's the thing is they're slowing down. So that our down, human eyes can so that see. Our human and, eyes can receive the data. And that makes brain. sense why it's so rare to experience that sort yeah. of manifestation versus yeah. temperature drops yeah. things like that but, much but more subtle things regular people everyday people can totally have that personal experience where they're like oh i thought i just saw somebody mm. they did it happened quick right they just or they heard it or they smelled it this i don't know if this happens to you so many times like i'll smell so, you know someone and i'm like oh you know that's just my clair audience yeah that's activated okay you know yeah so it's it's interesting. So would you say the majority, like when you were doing the paranormal investigation, was it primarily positive interactions that you had with spirits or was Not it? Not necessarily. Did you get, did you run across a lot of? I ran across a lot of sex stuff. Really? <laughs> or at least were the places that I were. So having sex with a spirit, that's a real thing. That's a very real thing then. It's interesting. I'm not saying I had a lot of, I'm just saying like the energy, the information that I was picking up about Inter people okay. or whatever they were doing or whatever. I mean, I did have two experiences like in a, there were there. It's not like necessarily you're having sex with them. It's whatever is happening is showing up somehow in a sexual way. Interesting. Huh? Like one place we went to it was a restaurant, but apparently, which I had no idea originally it was a whorehouse. Oh, wow. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm just walking along the wall and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I have to touch that wall. It felt so good to touch the damn wall. I wanted huh. to rub myself all over the wall. So I was just like, someone's looking at me like, Terry, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know, but I have to be here. It feels really good. <laughs> you know, and then someone pulled my hand away and I, you know, was away from the wall and then I was fine. I was like, okay. So that's kind of how it can show up. I had... Oh, weird. so uh, just on that note, can place so places, physical places can hold on to residual energy. energy. Absolutely. So that's when you're most haunted hauntings houses is, are residual. Homes. Okay. And that's what I've been saying in yeah. pretty much all my episodes. So yeah. I'm glad I got that right. Spirits that don't have to stay in location right. and they rarely do. But it's the not location an has, an, has an imprint mm. of the activity and it's residual. Okay. So it just keeps playing over and over and over like a movie. Okay. That makes sense. So it's not necessarily an there's a active human spirit there, no. but rather you're what you're yeah. experiencing as a haunting yes. is in fact just residual energy left yes. over mm -hmm. 
from the events that Mm -hmm. took place there or people that were there. Yeah. Okay. And so physical things have the ability to hold on to this residual Mm -hmm. energy, just like somebody can like Annabelle the doll, you know, Annabelle the doll spirit imprinted right onto it it's not that necessarily and that and that's because, which i guess in the movies they make it into a demon thing but sure 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 but in reality it's a yeah because when you're dealing with something that's physical there's physical energy and non-physical energy because it takes the non-physical energy to conjure up into a physical energy which is why it's both okay yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense good i'm glad i'm glad i got the understanding right because that's what most like whenever you look into or investigate a haunted location you're you know very rarely is there a human spirit, spirit. that's still it there have to be. Yeah. but it yeah most often is a residual, yeah. it's residual. sort of effect yeah. like doors kind of moving on their own or um that sounds so that people much hear to conjure up. really a door yeah yeah physically moving it's a, a door. physical movement yeah so have you have you ever been to the stanley hotel here Not in yet. colorado not yet. Very. I'd, like to I'd, be, I'd be. I'd love to go there with you because. How far is it from here? I don't yeah, have enough time. My flight's going to leave. I know, I know it's in like, Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's interesting because we went on it. So obviously, you probably know the sort of the story behind it, but it's definitely a haunted hotel for sure. We went on a ghost tour there, and during the ghost tour, we went to this area where they said there's a vortex of energy, mm. and kind of through this staircase in the hotel, one side of the hotel. And while we were standing there st- sort of staring up at it, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a door to a, one of the rooms behind us open and it swung open Wow! by itself and then came all the way and then stopped right before it closed. Wow, and it control. did this like several times. Nice. And so I was like, hmm, I'm wondering if that's, is that a human spirit or is that just sort of the vortex of energy here that's yeah. making some of these ha- things happen? And there's... People, the tour guides claim to take pictures and see apparitions in the mirrors and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think some of it's a little, I'm like, some guy showed Might us this picture and there's like this yeah. very detailed looking woman standing behind him. I'm like, well, maybe, but a hotel kind of makes sense for there'd be so much energy there because of how Theaters, many souls were through hotels. there. Hotels. Is that, is that kind oh, of yeah. correct? Like it's very, because you're de- whenever there's a lot of emotion because mm. emotion is energy in motion right so it's going to leave imprints so that's why there's so many theaters theaters, theaters and hotels mm-hmm. are like some of the most yeah. haunted locations because yep. indeed ah that makes a lot of sense yeah i haven't had a lot of paranormal experiences personally we've had some kind of weird things that at my house happen electronics too i mean oh, like yeah. electronics are always the first thing to sort of get messed with we've had some weird things in our at our house and our where we used to podcast out of a studio in our backyard we built and just funky things that happen with our cameras and um we have times in our house where we're sitting there and our tvs um in random places of the house will just turn on uh to some random show that we've never put on on this tv before i would listen to what the show is saying really like, yeah. what message yeah. are you trying to say? interesting so they could be trying to use that oh, yeah, to yeah. communicate billboards what a, too when you drive by billboards can be messages interesting you just have to be in a tune yeah yeah to it. rather than be like but oh. not look for it okay right they right. need to be random so if it does happen be open to i would that's how i mean anytime okay this is one of my kooky things anytime i walk by someone who's homeless on the street sometimes they have mental issues and they're talking every time i walk by i always just listen I'm like you got something to say hmm. just curious huh that's one of my kooky things. <laughs> Interesting. Because you never know what never know what they might never be. Never know. The divine is always yeah. around. Yeah. That's that's so wild. So like um another thing too that we've talked about quite a bit on the show is burial mm. but, you know, burial places. So there's a lot of sort of hauntings that occur on lands that were uh owned by Native Americans sure. where maybe there was a massacre that occurred there and yeah. there's massive burials there. So would make sense that Absolutely. if you were to come like there was an amusement i forget exactly which one it was there was an amusement park that was built on uh, indian burial grounds wow and the amount of just unfortunate things that happened at this amusement park was insane the it's amount of kids that died due to rides malfunctioning or just a few suicides that happened there and 
I just wonder, like, is that because of the the energy that lies in the ground? That energy influences energy. Mm. That's science. Yeah, yeah. No. So if you have somebody who's like mentally like not feeling good about themselves, they're already they're like, I just don't want to be here anymore, and then they get this negative energy, you know, that influences them, and they're like. I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. And then they make a choice. Right. It could easily happen. Yeah. Mm. Energy influences energy. Yeah. That's yeah. why it's super important to like pick people who are like at the same level as you or even higher than you so you can like go up to their level. So mm. that makes it you want people that raise your your frequency, your vibration, yeah. your your energy versus people that suck yeah. you back down. And you also don't want to go down to somebody else's energy either. So right. if they're having a bad day, you can support them, but you don't also have to be sad or find a reason to be sad to join in their pity party. And that's hard to do when you care about people because sometimes, you know, um, if you're an empath, for example, you'll take on that emotion to support them because yeah. you don't want them to feel alone. Right. Right. But then you're bringing yourself down. Right. And that comes down to that self-care thing again. And the mask. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, that's that's like. It's crazy. I'm that's telling you. There's Kendall so much. Kendall to a T. She's such an empath. And like I'm, I'm able to separate. I mean, doing what we do and covering these topics and diving into it and thinking about it. And just it's very. If you're an empath, it's easy to take on those yeah. those emotions and take on the yeah. the. the pain and, and but you're securely attached she is anxious attachment just based on what i've seen and what i've felt and you guys were raised differently and her core energy is feminine mm. and your core energy is masculine and feminine energy is very nurturing and compassionate yeah. and motherly so she's going to take care of somebody yeah. and you're going to be like protecting them you're going to be offering uh, do you have everything that you need you know, providing. So, you know, it even comes down to that. So there's a, I mean, energy is everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the slogan for today. Energy is everything. Energy is everything. That's so important. Well, Terry, I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. this it is interview. my pleasure. I could sit here and talk to you all day, but I, know. I don't want to, to worry out before you have to go, to go travel home. And I, I think we covered a good, yeah. amount of different things yeah uh, i appreciate these opportunities also because i get i get to share with people and on, on some level i feel like i educate yeah too, absolutely. and hopefully people walk away going okay i don't have to be life's bitch <laughs> yeah yeah you know yeah. like i can have some control i may not know how but i can learn how totally well and you're so, almost like a motivational speaker oh in a way. thank you like for you, saying that you are like you i appreciate you, you saying that like and I appreciate you recognizing where you don't have answers oh. to things. And like, that's the, because <laughs> so many people be like, oh yeah, I got it. I have a, I have a lot of room to grow, a lot <laughs> of room, you know, to learn. Um, yeah, I'm not perfect for sure. And I get information wrong and it's okay. Cause guess what? I'm human. <laughs> right. Right. You're not claiming to be anything that you're mm. not. You're, no. you have these gifts and you're using them to the best and of your ability. And other people have them too. Everyone right. has them. You can. Right. The medium stuff, no. But the psychic stuff, yes. And and no matter how late you are in life, I learned you can still become a medium. Wow. <laughs> I didn't I mean I was forty, you know. I'm a lot older than that now. But <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I didn't know. That was late in life. Wow. How many mediums would you say there are? Is there even a, a shit ton? Really? I don't know the actual number. There's a lot. Wow. Yeah. So is there like different levels of, of being a medium? Like do that? Or is it just sort of... I just think it's like different ways of communicating and how good your language or lingo is. I mean, medium is medium, you know? It's like how... Because for me, the spirit world speaks to me in metaphor. So I've got to go ahead and try and figure out what the hell are y'all saying? Right. So Rather I call than it, seeing an yeah. crystal clear image of right. something or you're right. sort of deciphering the message that's coming across and i'm doing that through feeling because that's my primary uh, right. communication right so i'm an experiential learner that's how i learn generally speaking some people are really great you know they have photographic memory you know so they'd probably be more clairvoyant you know um different levels of medium i, I think if you're a medium you're a medium 
I also think it's how are you going to use that mediumship? Sure. Like, do you want to entertain? Cool. Do you want to help people? Cool. I mean, do you want to hurt people? You can do that. Again, right. choice. Yeah. You know. Kind of just up to you to decide how, what what you do with yeah. it. I would, my advice, and I wrote this, this a whole blog on like getting jerked around by psychics and mediums, like trust your instinct when you're choosing someone, like don't just go with somebody, you know, and your body will tell you whether you can trust this person or not. Cause there are more frauds than legits out there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. And so, you you know, somebody who will at least work with you giving back your money. Like, for example, I uh, the first 10 minutes of my reading, you'll know if I'm bullshitting you or not. And if you think I'm bullshitting you or for whatever reason, you're not happy, you don't like it. If you tell me within those 10 minutes, I will reimburse you your money. I'm not here to waste your time or right, your money. Right. Now, if you don't after that 10 minutes, after I've told you, then that's on you. Because <laughs> there will be people who will try and cheat psychics and mediums, too. Well, they'll say, they're lying. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. Well, why didn't you tell me earlier? Because I'm using my energy, my time to help you. Right. So again, duality, both sides. But you can always trust yourself, trust your body. If something doesn't feel right, do not give that psychic or that medium or that healer or that shaman or that Reiki person money. Right. What about people that do tarot card readings? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I use those. I don't have to, but I use those. Yeah. You got to you know see if you like them are they shady i mean you 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 can know by looking at a picture yeah yeah you really no you can. can you really can i feel like that's so true or like people that try to attach terms to themselves to make themselves stand out for like marketing purposes that's a tough one though i get i get like people that throw around different terms you know people say i'm a light worker i'm a a life light i i understand what you're saying i totally get it but from someone who's also a business person which you can definitely right. be spiritual you have to and differentiate yourself it's from hard. other I people mean, yeah and more and more people are coming online to this art and this gift and they're really good so it gets saturated so then you have to go to the human aspect of it well how can i make myself stand out you know cuz we also have to earn a living we're using our time yeah you know so there's there's a definite stigma but if you use your god-given gift of intuition and as long as you have a human body that you're wearing an earth suit you have one you can say i don't like this one i'm not gonna give them money this one i feel like you know they'll be better if you're hearing somebody on the radio if you're watching someone on a podcast you get a sense totally you can, then you yeah. can trust that yeah you know i think and most people do do that they, hopefully yeah but a lot of people get taken yeah. For example, what's happening to me, like on Instagram, there are people that are DMing people with fake accounts asking for readings saying, I'll read for you. And I'm like, that's not me. Yeah. And, you know, I hope you don't pay. So you've got to use some common sense here. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a, that's a good. <laughs> no, that's a good because I feel like a lot of people go go wrong with that and yeah. just just don't trust their gut like you said you know you gotta, you gotta trust, trust your, gut. Your, your gut feeling you about have people. to and it will talk to you it will yeah no that's a, that's great advice so the last thing i have for you so what do you believe happens when we die how do how do we go from being alive here in the physical here on earth and what happens after so i've never had a near-death experience so my belief is not from personal okay, experience sure but I do believe that once the soul completely detaches from the body, the power source or a power source is gone. I do believe that we go into like a life review kind of situation mm. where we get to review our most previous lifetime and to see where is there room for improvement. And then from there, I'm not sure, but I, I feel kind of like I start making contracts or agreements with like the upper employment of God. I don't know who his employees are or whatnot. So is God, in your view, is God a, what is God to you? Like when you 
reference God. Well, when I'm refer- referencing God, I'm not referencing a human. Okay. For me, it's definitely not like the like biblical a, version no, of God. Okay. No, no. I mean, I'm God Jewish, is an so, energy. Yeah. Okay. I'm Jewish, so for me, God is more of an energy. Okay. Um, versus a person, but it's like a, it's just energy. Is but there's the meaning to it that I put to him. For me, it's a him. Um, Do you is, think God is love? Yeah, God is everything. Okay everything which is what energy is again energy is everything but that's probably some of my religious training <laughs> is yeah, that it sure. would be a him yeah but it, but i still feel like it's an energy thing and i just i just i i think we start making contracts for the next life and we start preparing to evolve and you know what did we learn from this lifetime and start applying it to next lifetime and wherever yeah, that is yeah i saw a movie um defending your life it's an older movie which to me kind of depicts what i'm talking about mm. and it's a comedy uh i think meryl streep is in it oh wow and i can't remember who I'll else the gentleman is yeah it's yeah. called defending your life it's hilarious but to me that's like what i feel like when the soul detaches from the body that's what goes on okay so if you see that you'll have to let me know so when you're communicating with spirits then they are sort of in that in between they i don't believe in an in between kind of place i mean like so they're in the spiritual world they haven't reincarnated into another physical physical world so they're not attached to a body at this point when you're communicating but i don't think they're stuck or anything like that Uh, right they're free and they're free yeah and yeah but they're just energy i mean energy is just energy there's no containment of it whatsoever you know it's just (laughs) <laughs> but we still like retain these memories these yeah it's like it's like a, <laughs> you know what it is it's like a jump drive yeah think of it that way yeah you save your files so they're just archived there they're just archives from all your yeah. your lives no that's akashic records yeah 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 <laughs> interesting that's cool though that's a very hopeful positive message i feel like i mean that's my people. belief yeah I, and, I, and i mean yeah I, I'd rather like than the alternative that I grew up of you stand before God and you know, you're judged judgment day. Well, and I, then you're, you know, I've always said this. How do we know this isn't hell? What we're in right now yeah, being in true. physical reality yeah, to yeah, me. Very is, true. Is good yeah. up, good up. That's a great I mean, point. It is very uncomfortable many, many, many times. So absolutely. This would be my definition. Does it get much hell. worse than this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying <laughs> sometimes. I mean, it's like, Oh good. God, you I don't know, know when things are just seem to be, and there's just so much evil everywhere it seems and you yeah. know is this yeah is this a is this hell is this version i don't know hopefully not <laughs> at least there's some joy in this hell at least well, there's some yeah, good yeah, things yeah. that happen but hell so. could just be a mental state yeah exactly you know so. see and and like i still have this like ingrained right picture of yeah. of the see, I wasn't judeo-christian raised, right hell. i wasn't raised with heaven and hell you know so i don't so have you don't, that right and that's kendall she's like never even knew that existed yeah. or that was something people believe in yeah. but when you're conditioned to believe it's a in conditioning. this you know and what you read in the bible hell is and there's all these things that's that why happen change there. is so difficult because we have to unlearn what yeah. we learned yeah and it's not easy yeah it'd be nice if we could all just start out on the same level playing field with no outside influence what, huh? a, what a world it would be but maybe that's not how it's supposed to be maybe this is the way that it's meant to be where we kind of like how else, figure it out. How else does evolution happen yeah. if there's nothing to involve from, evolve from? Right. And we're so you all don't on think there's schedules. a there's necessarily like an end point for all of this. Like there's not this sort of one day we all evolve and we all just end up in this beautiful place that's heaven and you know everything's just hunky dory all the time and there's no know. more evolution. Like does the evolution stop? I I don't know. I would think it wouldn't just based on history. Right. And then what happens to that negative energy? Does that just, does the negative energy just cease I don't know. to exist at the some point? The thing is, we're thinking as humans. Yeah. That's true. So we have limitations. Yeah. I can't even fathom what that, what does that even mean? What? Yeah. I don't know. What does that look like? Oh, God. Well, Terry, <laughs> we could, I could just keep going all day 
And I do have and a I flight would. to catch. I don't you know do. what time it is. You but do. I know. We've been in here for almost two hours. So. Oh, well, look at us. <laughs> I know. This is so much fun. Thank you for joining me on Lights Out. Hopefully, Thank you for having me. Yes. It, and also let everybody know where they can find you. Sure, sure. So I have a website, terryhuberman.com. I'm on Instagram at Intuitive Coach Terry. I've got a YouTube channel, Terry Huberman. So if you go to my website, you'll find everything there for sure. And you do online readings I do and stuff? online all over the world. That's readings, awesome. coaching, mentoring, energy shifting, healing, all the things. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So you're not just a psychic medium. You're an, what do you say? Intuitive healer? I call healer? myself an intuitive healer. Okay. That's a, I yeah. like that term. Yeah. I've changed the term because I don't know what the yeah, I what do you, actually yeah. do. Like, yeah, it's not like there's a, a I help book people. that you pull. There you go. I help people. <laughs> yeah. I help people with my divine gifts. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, I'll link everything below so you can check Thank out you. Terry's, all of her work, what she's got going on. Definitely go. It's terryhuberman.com. That's yeah. a great place to to look at all things Terry. Thank you so much for joining it me It was again. so nice to meet this you. This was awesome. And to read for your yes, baby. Yes, I know. I'm so <laughs> excited. And and actually, I haven't even, I don't even know if I've even mentioned that on the show yet. Oh. But no, 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 it's fine. I've been meaning to do it. <laughs> okay, I'm just literally, surprise. well, it's like so many episodes too are so negative. Like the oh. things I'm talking about sometimes involve children. And I'm just like, the last no. thing I want to do is like, By the talk way, about my baby. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, exactly. It just doesn't feel like the right thing. Okay. But so yeah, any of you most, we have a lot of crossover between our shows. So a nice. lot of my audience knows that I'm going to have a child, but in case you didn't know, I'm going to be a father in August. Yay, kiddo. I'm very excited. And Terry did a, a reading um, on her on her future child, and she sounds amazing. So I can't wait to meet her. She's going to be a fun one. I already know. Um, but yeah, that is where we will wrap up today's episode of Lights Out. Thanks again for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Lights out, everybody.